You too. When I say that the Lenovo Legion Go S is literally one of my favorite gaming handheld experiences after owning and trying the ROG Ally, ROG Ally X, the Lenovo Legion Go versus video coming soon. Stay tuned for that one, spicy. As well as like MSI claws and so on. I genuinely mean that. Like I at first didn't know what to expect with SteamOS. I was a little indifferent about it, never had tried it before. I still need to get a Steam Deck on the channel. We're gonna talk about that too. But after having and getting so accustomed to the Windows gaming handheld PC experience, which really isn't a Windows handheld experience, hopefully coming soon. With that being said, I liked it. I genuinely liked it. It was so much more stripped down and straight to the point, straight to gaming. And that is what a lot of people have hiccups with, with the Windows handhelds. Until Microsoft actually optimizes Windows for a handheld, that is like a big separator in between the two. Now, SteamOS is amazing, it's great. Why wouldn't you like it if you have a lot of games on uh, Steam? There are a few caveats with that though. I'll get into that in the video, but not every game is Steam OS compatible. There's a hint there. So if I go to my library, as you guys can see, there's Steam OS compatible and then there's all games. Certain titles that I would have loved to play like Call of Duty and Ghost of Tsushima and Grand Theft Auto V, it was unfortunate that I could not play them on this handheld. And that is a key difference that separates you know, the Steam OS only model from the Windows OS model. But on a positive note, I was able to play titles like God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Black Myth Wukong, Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, Cyberpunk, and more. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's actually quite positive. It was just unfortunate that some of my favorite titles were not available in Steam OS mobile. So I wasn't completely gameless, obviously, by any means, and it was just a lack of certain titles, but that's a direct comparison to the Z1 Extreme Windows gaming handhelds where all of those titles would be accessible. I'm able to play Fortnite on them, uh, COD, Warzone, all of those things because it's recognized and it's like using a Windows handheld, a Windows PC and a handheld body. Moving forward, right? Number one, the ergonomics on this thing absolutely love it Woo! i've been wanting to get my hands on this for a while yo i'm not gonna lie first grab first grip first feel it actually feels really good very well shaped and very well designed for ergonomics it fits in my hands really well i love the placement of the back buttons that's another thing they're like naturally placed easy to click without having to put any extra effort to move my fingers joysticks feel pretty good I believe these are Hall Effects joysticks, which is another major W. D-pad, got some clickiness to it. Buttons are solid. They don't have a click to them. They're more of mushy buttons in comparison. Nice click bumpers and the triggers feel really good as well. And you can switch them to hairpin. All in all, first uh, feel in the hands, it actually feels really good. Very ergonomic. From holding it for hours and hours, like I was on the flight for about what, two and a half hours there and back each time. So that's five hours, never had a complaint. In the hotel, hours of gaming late night, never had a complaint. When I got home playing God of War, nonstop, locked in, immersed in my gaming experience, no complaints from an ergonomic perspective for my hand size and just my overall physical, you know, interaction. I love it. The comfort, the hand held ability, the usability over hours of gaming straight. Ah. This design, Lenovo absolutely knocked it out the park with this one, like 100,000%. Boy, I cannot wait for the Lenovo Legion Go 2. If this is a sneak peek to what's coming with the Go 2, Oh, trust me. But even here at the Legion Go S with the Z1 Extreme Steam OS, this is the model that I'm running. Man, ergonomics, you guys. Knocked it out of the park. Perfect placement for uh, back trigger buttons. Just overall comfort is top tier with this thing. Like, that's one of the standout features. I mean, with a gaming handheld, you just want to be able to game and enjoy it 
without odd shaping or uh, you know weird button placement and whatnot, absolutely phenomenally knocked it out the park. Yo, shout out to uh, Lenovo for doing that. I, I'm like, I'm really hype about the vibes of this. Now, if we talk about like speakers front facing, good in the sense of front facing, but they're not terribly loud or knock you off your socks. You know, great. Uh, I mostly was gaming with headphones because I was on a flight, so I used some uh, noise cancellation, you know, the Sony XM6s over the head headphones. Uh, in a hotel, I would just play on the speakers, and I loved it. It was just a great experience. This is just such a comfortable uh, gaming handheld to use in all of your comfort situations, whether you're just on the couch chilling, even in your gaming room, inside of your gaming chair, on the airplane, in the hotel chilling in a hotel bed late night and whatnot, like just offered such a great comfort and experience for gaming. Like I literally gamed for hours straight and never once felt any type of fatigue. That's the best way that I could explain it. Genuinely though. Another thing with this is the screen. And I've been loving this eight inch, 1920 by 1200, 120 Hertz VRR screen. The screen looks really good. I was actually impressed at how well God of War looked, the AAA title. Cyberpunk looks good as well, and so does Wukong. And every time I'm playing, uh, I do have the overlay because you have the option to have the overlay getting information about FPS and performance. So having that HUD always displayed, you guys are going to see it every time I show gameplay. It gave me a lot of information, but honestly, I was just immersed in gaming. VRR is beautiful. It's a nice size. That's another thing going for this screen. A nice, beautiful size. And playing AAA titles, like I started God of War on here, beat God of War. <laughs> and, uh, well, I beat the, uh, you know, the storyline. I still got to go fight Valkyries, if you know, you know. It looked amazing on here. Been playing Cyberpunk, Black Myth Wukong, looked great on here, Red Dead Redemption. Just gaming and not feeling any lack in a handheld, that was the best things about the Legion Go S. Okay, battery, right? When it comes to gaming handhelds, and you put a lot of power in them, they require a lot of power and they use a lot more battery. Now you got different ways you can run, you know, SteamOS, you can power limit it if you want to. Me personally, I'm like Z1 Extreme enthusiast. I want the Z1 Extreme to breathe and perform in its full capability. So when it comes to my performance settings, I'm in performance profile always. I have no frame limit. I don't have any power limits and I allow this thing to do what it fully is capable of. Now, me personally, I always keep this plugged into power for the majority of the time that I'm gaming. There's times that I'll do battery, like if I'm just like laying in the bed and I know I'm winding down the gaming session, I'll just run it off battery. Obviously when you're running at high power, you're running a AAA title on battery, that overall battery life is going to be reduced. So enters the chat what I typically use with all gaming handhelds to prolong battery life is something like this. I highly recommend if you're a power for user, you wanna do Z1 Extreme on performance full on, grab something like this. I'll have links down in the description below. And when you're like at a place where you can plug in, I'll show you guys what I use. And when I'm at a plug, I use this. This is the ROG, this is 140 watt delivery, but the reason I use this, look at the multitude of power points if I need to plug in multiple things. So it's more convenient than the standard charger, but you can use the standard charger and save money, no big deal. But I highly recommend these larger power banks to prolong your gaming experience. Now on typical, I think if you're running in high-end performance mode, you're probably getting about what, an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you're lucky of straight gaming. You plug in these, you extend that tremendously. So the battery that's internally inside of here is a 55.5 watt hour battery. I just stayed plugged in. When I was on a flight, I plugged it into my, my big anchor uh, power joint, put that in the pocket of the back seat, had my little soft bendable USB-C cable going into here. And I just gamed the entire flight. I had a two and a half hour flight, literally played straight through, got a war, got it in. I'm off the flight. I got full battery on here because I used the power bank and I was able to go to my destination, hotel, you know what I'm saying? And at night, picked it up in the hotel, I already had full battery because I used the power bank for the flight. Just played, boom, untethered until I knocked out, went to sleep, got up and started grinding 
on you know my obligations out there and whatnot that was really cool that was for the samsung unpacked event and i enjoyed that event as well as i enjoyed having this as my main source of entertainment during that entire time so first time using steam os and i used it in the way that i would have liked to use it which was with hardware that had the z1 extreme this right here is a steam deck with power and performance <laughs> The Steam Deck that I would have wanted and would have purchased in a heartbeat, which is why this is so good to me, having a Z1 Extreme. My only reason for not having a Steam Deck right now is just the hardware is a bit limiting. Um, and I also got introduced to gaming handhelds with the ROG Ally, starting off with the Z1 Extreme. So I started off with the Z1E and I moved all the way throughout all of the gaming handhelds that I've tried, have all had uh, Z1Es except for you know the Intel Core Ultra variants and whatnot but now we're seeing a lot of z1 extremes even in the msi setup uh or seeing a lot more you know amd chips and whatnot and then the z1 extreme 2 is literally here i would love to uh check out the legion go 2 with the z1 extreme 2 i can't wait for that but steam os is smooth like Outside of the caveat of not every game being available on SteamOS, which was a bummer because some of my favorite titles like Call of Duty, uh, Grand Theft Auto, I'm trying to think of another one. I can't think off the top of my head, but there were some titles that I would have loved to been able to play. I like, you know, BR Battle Royale and stuff like that that I couldn't play because they're SteamOS limited. That's the thing about going full on SteamOS is you kind of restrict it into what's compatible with SteamOS. Whereas if I got the same Legion Go S, but the Z1 Extreme Windows version, everything's unlocked because I can have Steam on there. I can use whatever game launcher, uh, whether it's Rockstar or uh, Epic Games or, uh, you know, Battle.net. And I can just run their launchers natively and run their games. And even with their anti-cheat things and whatnot, it'll run because I'm literally running a Windows PC in a handheld body. So you have to deal with Windows in its full, you know, layout and you have to understand that. As long as you can navigate that, you understand keeping your drivers, you understand how to deal with all of that, which there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube, you're fine. And you'll have access to more games. So that's the difference between the two. But the difference for people who are intimidated by the whole Windows PC in a handheld and dealing with drivers and dealing with Windows all in all and just wanting a straight to the point ui that literally you can just swipe through get to your games tap just like a console it's very much the console experience we have a uh, touchpad here it's like really really nice in that sense so it's very straightforward now in that you're going to spend more than you would with a steam deck but you're getting more performance wise you're getting a very well designed game and handheld and you're getting just in my opinion an all-around package that just equals a great experience. So do I feel like this is worth the price tag that it is at $829.99? Me personally, if I were picking this up and I was really dedicated to the SteamOS experience over the Windows experience, then yes. Again, you just need to check the titles that are SteamOS um, compatible and then whatever isn't and see if it's a trade-off for you or not. And then that'll help you make your decision between do you go with the Windows version or do you go SteamOS? My first introduction to SteamOS was positive. I liked it. Outside of that one caveat, that's my one little stickler for those few titles. But if all of those titles was on there or if every title was SteamOS compatible, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, why deal with, you know, the Windows and, the, and all of the drivers and just Windows non-optimized for handhelds? when you just do SteamOS. So it's one of those things. And also there are some bubbling uh, coming up with the, what is that? The Xbox handheld and a possible Windows OS for handhelds coming and whatnot, Microsoft. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of promises, but you know, promises mean nothing until they deliver on them. So again, my overall experience, user experience, which matters most with the Steam OS variant of the Lenovo Legion Go S was phenomenal. The Lenovo Legion Go S is well designed. That handheld alone with a powerful chip like the Z1E or if they ever do a version with the Z1E2 or whatever is a go. Windows or SteamOS. I haven't physically used the Windows version, but I can already, you know, uh, predict it. I mean, I haven't 
uh, idea after using every single uh, Z1 Extreme Windows handheld on the market. You know what I mean? So uh, really nice plethora of RAM with speeds, just really nice specs, really nice delivery, well positioned gaming handheld. Um, and to those who it aligns with, it's well worth it, whether you want to go SteamOS or the Windows version. And that's my honest opinion. I loved everything about it. I cannot wait for the Lenovo Legion Go 2. I cannot wait for the future of gaming handhelds. It's one of my favorite categories, and it will continue to be that. My name is CJ. I know tech, so you don't have to, even though I know you know everything, right?